Rick Ludick is the director of UNC's Institute of Marine Sciences in Moorhead City. His team serves North Carolina by conducting research, training future and current marine scientists, and providing expertise in marine issues to North Carolina communities and beyond. And that's one of the neat things about our institute here, and that is we have such a, a variety of disciplines of scientists. So we don't all have, we're not all meteorologists, we're not all coastal oceanographers, but rather we can look at the big picture from several different aspects. One part of that service is studying hurricanes, how they affect our coastline and communities, and how we can anticipate and offset the effects of future storms. Ludic says the land in eastern North Carolina is very low, and our coast just happens to be located in the track of storms. For whatever reason, the storms um, form uh, near low latitude and then come typically west across the, across the Atlantic and then swing to the north. And when they do that, they tend to collide or run very close to the, to the North Carolina coastline. And so the combination of lots of storms coming by the coast and, and low, uh, low topography makes it very vulnerable to flooding. Storm surge is another indicator for how destructive a particular hurricane might be, but people often don't realize the damage it can cause. The storm surge is actually very damaging. Um, of course, you know, it causes drownings and, and loss of life. The force of the water, particularly when there are waves on top of it, do most of the, an awful lot of the destruction of, of, of buildings and, 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 and structures of, of various sorts. So it really uh, carries a lot of the power of the storm. Um, and, and yet, um, it's something that oftentimes I think people actually underestimate and underappreciate. One of the things we've been doing recently is working with colleagues at the Renaissance Computing Institute to take this information and to put it into a Google Earth framework. Uh, and this is really helpful because you can really zoom in and see how uh, the water uh, and where it goes uh, in, uh, in relationship to the, the satellite imagery and, and the things that we're used to seeing in Google Earth. In fact, we can zoom in a little bit here uh, on Down East Carteret County, which is largely, which was severely impacted with Hurricane uh, Isabel, and see how uh, the inundation, uh, substantial parts of Open Grounds Farm, Cedar Island, and all of that are underwater as a consequence of, of Hurricane Isabel. The Institute collects data before, during, and after storms and uses computer models that predict flooding, storm surge, and waves associated with hurricanes. They work also with groups like the North Carolina Flood Plain Mapping Program to redefine the flood levels in the eastern part of the state. Really, the wealth of data that's being collected at the Institute are probably in areas that you might not think about when you think of a hurricane. Um, we collect data on how the beach changes, but then we collect data on, on how the quality of the water changes. Um, you know, is the oxygen levels changed? Have there been a lot of runoff from the shore that have put pathogens in the water? of viruses and bacteria? Have there been uh, a lot of runoff from the land that's put nutrients into the water that then fertilize and cause algae to grow and cause uh, potentially cause problems down the line uh, as far as that goes? So the, so the folks here at the Institute uh, really kind of cover the gamut in terms of the, the direct response to the storm and then a lot of the ecological and biological um, consequences of the storm.